Good morning, everybody. Dawn McGee, your nutrition evangelist here. And today I have the pleasure of talking with Carla Frank. Um, good morning, Carla. How are you? Good morning, Dawn. How are you today? I'm great. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking time to join me today. I can't wait for everybody to hear more about you and what you do. Can you take a minute to introduce yourself, please? Sure. My name is Carla Frank, and I'm the founder of WIM, Women in Motion, Run the World. And we are a running and walking group that brings activity to everyone. Our original goal, of course, is to travel the world, uh, running the world, as we say, doing races and enjoying the great outdoors. In this pandemic, we're really stuck at home, but that's okay. We have other fun things for people to do, to stay active and to get in shape. That's awesome. As, as everybody knows, one of the key legs of my triangle of health is movement. And so I was so thrilled that you were joining me today to talk about how everybody can get moving and get get running. So. How, how does that work? How did you get started? How do you recommend people get started? Well, I really grew up very sedentary. I was the kid who failed PE, and the way to fail PE is to just never show up. And I never got picked for the team, and I don't hold that against any of my classmates because I was a total liability. When the ball came my way, I would run the other way. So I really spent my whole life behind a desk or on the couch. Um, and when I was 40 years old, my husband decided that he didn't want to be married anymore. And he just didn't come home one day. Sorry. So needless to say, I was really stressed out. And I'd spent time at the gym because people said working out was going to make me feel better. And I spent hours at the gym and people asked me what I was training for. And I was like, training? I don't know anything about training. I'm just here trying to get my life back together. And so the only sport I was really good at was walking. Because, you know, at this point I was 40. So I figured I'd had like 38 and a half years of experience at walking. I'd never run. I never cycled. I didn't learn how to ride a bike as a kid. I never did any of that. But I knew how to walk. So I started walking farther and farther. And I decided for my 40th birthday, I was going to walk the Seattle half marathon, not run, walk. Everyone knows how to walk. So I did it. It only took four hours. No big deal. I had a great time and I wanted to do it again. And then I discovered, however, that if I wanted to do a full, that might take eight hours. And that was a really long time. Being an accountant, which was my career, I was very efficient about time management. And I decided that if I wanted to do that, I had to get faster. So I started jogging, not in any attempt to win any um, medals or anything. I just started jogging. By the way, I see that my camp picture has gone away. Can you still see it? I cannot see you, but I can hear you. All right, let me try pushing this button and see what happens. All right. I don't know why it did that by itself, but here I am. And you're here, back. Oh, I'm back. Okay, so I don't know what happened there. But basically, I just wanted to walk faster, and I started jogging. So people always say, well, I'm not really a runner. I don't think I can get active. But walking is just running at a different pace. Hiking is running in a different environment. You're on, you're out and the beautiful outdoors with beautiful scenery. So it's all part of the same sport. The goal is to enjoy yourself and be active. And let me tell you, since I started this in the divorce, that was horrific, right? It improves your mood. Be outdoors. Get, when you're moving your body, your endorphins go up. It's like feel good hormones without the alcohol, without the drugs, without any of that. Your body just naturally takes care of yourself. And I even heard on the news the other day that walking by the water improves your mood. I don't remember what percentage they gave, but studies had shown that walking in beautiful scenery, no matter how fast you go, or no matter what speed, or even if you consider yourself slow, it's going to improve your outlook on life. I wholeheartedly agree. 
since we've been home during the pandemic, we've made a point of going outside for a walk every day. And and it's amazing the different things you notice. Some of my neighbors have taken to doing um, chalk drawings on their driveway, and I love seeing what they've got every day. I loved watching the flowers bloom. Mm -hmm. um, I've loved watching people set up their patios so they can sit outside and enjoy the weather. I used to be a runner. And then I had um, both of my hips and one of my knees replaced. So not so much these days. So what would you recommend to someone who may be coming back from an injury or um, just getting started? What are your top tips for, for getting started? So one of the most important things I teach is running and walking and hiking pain-free, which has a lot to mm. do with your body mechanics, especially those of us who are starting later in life it's really important to pay attention to your body mechanics and making sure your body is moving in the way it was intended. Often when people start running, everybody else in their life will say, oh, your knees are gonna be shot, you're gonna get hurt. I can tell you that I have run over 18 full marathons, 110 races, more than 50 half marathons. I have had no knee problems, I have had no back problems, it is all about focusing on how your body moves. And that's what I teach in my 24 week program, Finding Joy in Motion. It's how to work your body in a way that is good for your body, not in a way that hurts it. So I last October, I ran three consecutive marathons over three days, 78.6 miles with 6,000 feet of elevation gain and loss around Lake Tahoe. So those of you on the West Coast or if you visited Lake Tahoe, it's a beautiful area. Nothing could be a more spectacular or epic experience. And I went all the way around the lake on foot, no car, with absolutely no, I mean, obviously I was sore after it was over 24 hours later, but no no residual pain, no injuries. I trained for it that in a way that didn't cause any injury. I had a fabulous experience. So running does not have to hurt. Running wrong is what hurts. And I am passionate about sharing with people how to run and walk and hike injury free. I have friends in their 70s who run and hike regularly with this method. Well, that sounds like something everybody could do, regardless of how old we are, because pain is no fun. And I am all about finding the joy in what you do and enjoying it. If it's a chore, we're not going to do it. So absolutely, let's make it fun. And another tip we use is, of course, the community. So not only in our program, not only do we have educational components, but we have a huge community aspect, which is really important, especially right now during the pandemic. With everything having gone virtual, our workouts have gone virtual as well. So you can join us from anywhere in the world. We have different times to accommodate different time zones. And we walk and talk virtually. We do a group run together on Zoom. I love that. Tell me a little bit about how people can find out more about your runs. So I'm going to post my contact information in on your Facebook Live, but you can Great. register for our walking group on our website, wimruntheworld.com, W-I-M runtheworld.com. You can join our Facebook group, which coincidentally is Wim Run the World with Carla Frank. You can follow me on Instagram at Carla.WimRun. And when you register to join our walking group, you'll get reminders to join us what times we're going. You can connect to us on Zoom and meet the other ladies and have a fabulous talk while you're walking so you're never alone. From a safety perspective as well, you're never alone because you're connecting with other people. You're not just out there by yourself. So you can maybe venture out into some trails that you might not want to do otherwise. And we are a, there to support you. So we have a fabulously supportive group. We have super interesting conversations on all of our walks and runs because people talk about what's on their mind. We learn new things and yet we're getting our exercise while we're doing it. That's amazing. I, I love that. How creative is that to have a virtual 
group during this time. I absolutely love it. I have another question for you, Carla. I see behind you lots and lots of medals, and I know that you have traveled to different places for your races. Tell me, tell me your top two favorite places that you've ever done a race. Oh my God, that's so hard to tell because every time I go to a new place, it becomes my new favorite. So as you can see, I've done over a hundred races and I've raced in such interesting places. I've done the London Marathon, the Berlin Marathon, the Athens Classic Marathon, the original course from the city of Marathon into the city of Athens, finishing at their Olympic Stadium. Uh, I've done the Jerusalem Half Marathon. As I mentioned, I did three marathons consecutively around Lake Tahoe. I've done Big Sur. Um, in Central California. I did the Kauai Marathon last year. Um, there are so many incredible places to go. One of my favorite trips was to Nashville, Tennessee, because I am a lifelong country music fan, and I've always wanted to go to Music City. I grew up in Florida, so Nashville isn't that far away, and I could have gone on a trip anytime I ever wanted, but it's hard as a single woman to plan a trip by yourself, to go sightseeing. It seems kind of weird. Who would do that? But when I made, when I registered for the Flying Monkey Marathon, which is in Nashville, I was all of a sudden so excited that I was finally going to go to Music City. So traveling through races is a fabulous way to go to new places and experience new things and then do all that sightseeing that you never really felt comfortable doing on your own, but you're there for the race, so you have a great reason. That's how I ended up in Hawaii too. I also did the Honolulu Marathon. Um, and one of the goals of this group is to take women to these fabulous places and to travel together as, a, as women on a fabulous girls weekend or week away in a beautiful space. Last This past June, we as a group were going to go to the Niagara Falls Women's Half Marathon and, and do some great wine tasting and eating and sightseeing in Niagara Falls. Unfortunately, that got canceled due to the pandemic, but we'll be back soon with, with travel experiences as well. Absolutely. And I think that's a great thing to take away is that traveling can be healthy and it can be fun and bring in all the joy so so you travel through um through running i love to travel and sightsee and try different foods and wines and it's it's still healthy it's still part of our healthy mm -hmm. lifestyle and it doesn't have to be um uh, detrimental to your health to do all the traveling so I'm, no I'm my favorite that. thing is a walking tour of a new city to taste yes. all of the food so i love scheduling food tours but on foot you're getting your exercise, you're learning about the culture and the cuisine of the place that you're visiting, and you're having a great time. Absolutely, I love to do the same. So maybe someday we'll take a group of women on a, a food and wine and running tour of, of Europe. Sounds good. Perfect, well thank you so much for joining me today, Carla. Any uh, last thoughts you'd like to leave our audience with? I'd love for you all to join me on a walk and it's free. So because you've, you're watching this podcast, you'll have the information in the contact in the, in the Facebook. So please feel free to reach out, reg register on our website and join our walks. We'd love to meet you. And thank you so much for having me, Don. Fabulous. I hope everybody has a great week. And until next time, ciao.